Hey there, 2033, it's Dr. Wilderman again. Um, so this time I am talking to you about the media math assignment. Now, uh, not many of us got into media majors because we are awesome at math. Uh, now some of you, some of you students in 2033, you might have excellent math skills. And some of you might be equally skilled with language and math. And uh, believe me, I envy that. Um, but it seems that the majority of media related majors say that they struggle with math. Um, I definitely was one of those students when I was uh, studying journalism and professional writing, and I'm still one of those people today. Uh, but what I've learned concerning math is, just like when I was in college algebra, I had to put more effort into that than I did other classes. I had to seek additional help from people who had better skills and I had to ask questions until I understood. Um, sometimes asking those same questions repeatedly. Um, so we are all likely familiar with the term illiteracy. We may be less familiar with the term innumeracy, um, which is basically just the lack of understanding of math. It's similar to illiteracy, but with numbers. As media writers, we cannot be enumerate. Um, making sense of numbers, explaining them clearly and accurately through our work through our words is essential in various media industries um, so we can't just say I'm bad at math and leave it at that uh, some of us might have to say I'm bad at math but I'm gonna work till I get it right and um, and have a system in place to make sure that I'm getting it right so it's imperative that we know and understand some basic math skills uh, nearly all media professionals are going to deal with math at some point in their writing. Some of you will deal with it a lot. Um, so for this assignment, um, you're going to be dealing mainly with measures of central tendency. So um, mean, which is the simple average that we'll, we're probably more familiar with, along with median and mode, as well as with percentages and per capita equations. Those are the main things that this assignment deals with. These are common mathematical equations that are expressed frequently in various types of media writing. They're pretty basic, um, but just because they're basic does not mean I'm shaming anyone if, that, if you need a reminder for how to do this. Um, I frequently look at the formulas for how to do this to make sure that I'm getting things right. Uh, in our canvas, there's a PowerPoint presentation called Media Math, and the formulas for mean, median, mode, percentages, uh, calculating percentages, and per capita. There are slides uh, for those formulas, along with information on why we use each of these, um, when it's best to use one over the other, information like that. So for any math that I'm gonna publish in my own work, so be that academic work, um, magazine articles that I'm writing, fiction work, um, I double check in two ways. So first with my super smart at math friend, Darcy, and second through an online equations tool that I have found that I really like. So, uh, but I'm gonna share a humbling experience with you that I had recently. So I was presenting some committee work to all of my college, uh, Gaylord College faculty members, and I made an error with a pretty simple percentage um, because I'd rushed through it and I hadn't followed my normal protocol for checking my work. And, um, you know, luckily that wasn't published information that's out there to the whole world with my name on it. Um, but, uh, you know, it was embarrassing enough in front of my colleagues. So it was a good reminder for me to, um, to go back and continue to always double check my work with numbers. So getting to the actual assignment. Um, the first question that a lot of students ask is, can I use a calculator? And the answer is yes, 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 you can. Um, the, then moving on to, um, I wanna give you some tips for both parts one and two of the assignment. So for part one, uh, you're gonna start by, starts by asking you to calculate uh, just people's ages. Simple enough, but I just wanna remind you, remember to ask yourself if that person's birthday has happened this year or not. Um, next in part one, you're gonna move on to some word problems. Um, these word problems are gonna deal with percentages, per capita, averages. 
concerning the averages, make sure that you check back. Um, you know, if you're if you're not great at this stuff, make sure you check back to those slides in the math presentation um, for how mean, median, and mode are calculated differently, um, and when it's best to use each one. And remember that the formulas for those, along with the formulas for per capita and for percentages, uh, those are on those slides as well. Also in part one, there's a particular problem that asks you to deal with numbers concerning prison sentences. Some of those numbers are shown in months, some of them are shown in years. Keep in mind, until you convert all of the numbers to one or the other, you're not going to be able to, um, to calculate that correctly, right? It needs to be either all in months or all in years. Um, and then finally in part one, I want you to pay attention to the specific wording of each word problem, all right? Uh, particularly for how your numbers should be expressed. Is the problem asking you, after you get your calculation, is it asking you to round up to the nearest whole number? Is it asking you to use decimals? Um, if it is uh, percentages, is it asking you to express increases and decreases uh, in what form? So just again, pay careful attention, attention to the wording. Accuracy for this assignment means not only getting the math correct, but expressing the, the answer in the manner that the problem calls for. All right, so moving on then to part two of the assignment. So this requires you to do some math accurately, just like in part one. But it also asks you to take it to the next step as a media writer and put some of those numbers into a newsworthy story. And just as important, you have to put those numbers, uh, you have to show those numbers within the context of the story. Write them into a story in a way that is not only newsworthy, but that is meaningful and relevant and easy to understand. With newsworthiness, you're going to need to decide what is most important to the story um, for your audience, right? Does the reader need all of the numbers that you have been given, all of the numerical information that you've been given? Maybe some of it should be cut out, maybe not, but if you do use all the information, there should still be a hierarchy to it, right? Like, ask yourself for this particular story and for my audience, what numbers are most important to them? Um, make sure that information comes first or earlier in the story than other information. Uh, remember that, you know, with a story like we're asking you to write, uh, too few numbers and you might not be answering all the questions that need to be answered in the story. Too many numbers and you might clutter it up, might clutter up your writing and confuse readers. It's really a balance. Um, now, I have a story to share with you about providing context with numbers in a story. So um, a good friend of mine who has been in uh, the newspaper business in Montana for a long time and then currently is working as an editor for a magazine in Montana, um, he shared with me uh, this, this headline, this story that he saw. And um, in Montana, um, the Montana hasn't been hit very hard with cases of COVID-19. All right, they have some, but they definitely don't have the numbers that other states have. So Ryan was telling me uh, how there was this county in Montana and it had a very small school. And um, back in the spring, at the very end of spring, they were gonna go ahead and reopen for a few weeks because they had had no cases of COVID-19 with any of the students or people who worked at the school. And their county had 17 cases, but the school was on the outskirts of the county pretty far away from where any of the cases had um, originated. So they were gonna try to open and, um, uh, and, and do it carefully and see how, that, how it went. All right, well, a couple weeks after they reopened, um, there was this story and the headline indicated something like um, school system in Montana, um, after school system in Montana reopens, cases of COVID increase 118% um, for that particular county. Now, that sounds like an astronomical number, like, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? Why did they reopen? But if you actually look at the numbers and the context, that meant from 17 cases in the county to 37 cases in the county, and still none of those cases had uh, were from students at that school or any faculty or staff or anybody working with the school. So yes, while 
the number of cases had increased from 17 to 37, and that is approximately a 118% increase, the headline was written in a way that was perhaps meant to be alarmist and sensational, right? So saying that something has increased 118%, um, uh, really, to know if that's, a, if that's a significant increase or not, you have to look back at those basic numbers, as well as provide the context that no one in the school um, had been affected. So, all right. Um, as a media writer, the lesson of all that is, as a media writer, if you don't put the math into the particular real accurate context, at best you're going to be confusing and unhelpful, but at worst you're going to be misleading. Um, all right, so two more tips then for part two. All right, make sure that you check in the AP style book for style issues that uh, for style issues that are in regard to writing numbers. There's a lot of them. The numeral section is gonna be really helpful to you for this assignment, okay? AP style book, numerals section. And as a final reminder for part two, when you have the story for part two written out, have someone else read it um, who, probably someone who, else who's not in, the, not in the class, have someone read it who's not been looking at that information and familiar with it. If they understand it the way you intended it to be understood, that's a good sign, right? Always good to have somebody else read your work. Okay, then uh, moving on to, I'm sorry, let's see. Oh yeah, that was, uh, that was my last suggestion for part two. Um, now to wrap up uh, this whole little mini lecture, um, I just want you to keep in mind some of the information that was presented on that math PowerPoint, um, specifically the five most common reasons why media professionals make mistakes with math in our work. All right, so number one, we miss here. All right, someone gives us information, we write it down or we type it out wrong, we don't ask for clarification, we didn't ask someone to repeat themselves, right? We just quickly wrote it down and then uh, we got it wrong, right? By our own notes, we have it wrong. You can combat this by asking questions till you understand, asking people to repeat information, and recording your interviews so you can go back and listen to it and uh, make sure that you heard it accurately. Second reason that we make mistakes with our media work um, and numbers, we're given, maybe we're given information accidentally that's wrong, but we use it without checking it, without verifying it. Um, it wasn't given to us intentionally incorrect, um, but we didn't follow up, we didn't do the double checking. Now it's out there with our name on it and it's wrong. Um, the third reason, most common reason that media writers get math wrong Someone gives us intentionally misleading or wrong numerical information. And again, we use it without verifying or double checking. And then if we do that, again, it's out there with our name on it and it's wrong. And, and even worse than scenario two, it was given to us intentionally wrong. Um, number four, fourth reason that we make these numerical mistakes in our media writing. We get the numbers right we do our own calculations and mess that up, all right? Nobody to blame but ourselves in this situation, right? So even if you're good at math, double check your mathematical work. If you're not so good, develop a system, like my system with my friend Darcy and using this particular online tool to double check my work, right? Find an app or a website that works for you. Um, have others read over and double check your work. And then the fifth and final reason, most common reason that we get math wrong in our media work, um, someone at another outlet makes a mistake, right? And we use that information from that other outlet. This happens frequently um, if we use it, it might be an outlet that we really trust and they usually get information right and they put it out there honestly and openly and they are usually accurate. But keep in mind, anybody at any time can make a mistake. So if you're going to use information and credit another source, no matter how credible that source has been, make sure to double check the work, all right? Even reputable sources make mistakes. All right, and I'm gonna leave you with that. So good luck with the media math assignment.